John, you mentioned after the last game that Ohio uh, shoots a lot of threes. How, how confident are they in that? How, what kind of impact can the three-pointer make in any? Um, that's how they get on runs. Uh, they're scoring over 80 a game. Um, they played, you know, good teams. I mean, Belmont's a good team, great program. Uh, Robert Morris, you know, played them, but, you know, again, they went on runs. But it's the three they shoot from, like, every position. The five, the four, the three, the two, the point guards average in 20 a game. They were in the NCAA tournament a year ago, and um, most of their guys back. They're playing a little different than last year, but they're still – um, they're unbelievable. I mean, this, this uh, we need this game to just continue our path. Um, you need to have tune-up games. You can't just go throw kids into the fire. You need tune-up games. But you also need to get challenged. Like, they're going to play the post different than these other teams have. Um, they're going to play pick-and-roll defense a little bit different. You have to play them a little different because of who they are. Um, you got to pick your poison a little bit. Um, but they're good. Their big guys are really good offensive players and scorers and passers. They're averaging almost 20 assists a game. Think about that. Good team. Good team. Well coached. Your impressions of Sapir when you played him at Georgia the last two years versus what he's been able to do for you all so far? Two things. He didn't guard. I'm not even sure he tried. Um, the second thing was um, that you could go under a lot because he didn't shoot the ball well. I, I told him when we talked, and you know, he his interest in coming here. I said, "Well, first of all, I know what you'll do for our team because you're a point guard. I know what you'll do for the speed of the game because of who you are. There are three things that." If you're not willing to do, you shouldn't come here. You have to be a disruptive defensive player or I'm not helping you. So you got to prove that you can be disruptive. Uh, and that's without fouling. The second thing is you got to have a floater because you're not big enough to just go in and try to shoot layups. The floater will get you fouled. They're not fouling you on layups. The third thing is you can't shoot 22% from the three. You don't have to shoot 50%, but you can't shoot 22%. you got to get in the 30s. If we get those done for you, not only have you helped the team, we've helped you. And that was the conversation. So I still don't think he's shooting enough floaters. But he's getting to the left hand. But he's probably leads our team in shots blocked. Probably he and Davion would be the other, which is why I keep saying don't, you know, he had a shot block in like three years before this. Is Who's that? that? Said he had and he didn't play block. big teams like we're playing. I don't know what to tell you. John, did, did his turnovers at Georgia bother you? Well, I knew that wouldn't happen here because I told him. Like, you're, you're not turning the ball over four times a game here. You know that, right? So, look, if it's important to the coach, it'll be important to the player. If it's not important to you, it won't be important to them. And after the last game, he, he looks at me and he said, I had won. The game before, I said something about he did something crazy. He said, Coach, I had no turnovers. I said, let me watch the tape. You had to have won. Um, but, he, you know, he got sloppy the first game. And, and you know, I, I told him in no uncertain terms. I mean, it was – I kept it real in front of the team that you can't do this. You can't hurt your team this way. Most of it was over dribbling or making the hardest play you could make. You got too many good players on the court. You can't do it. How does Savir relate to other point guards over the last decade in terms of taking over a team and emotionally, hey, get them together, let's do this, let's do that? Probably, probably more like Tyler, um, you'll listen than anybody I've had. Um, you know, he, uh, I did make a statement to him yesterday, again, in front of the team. See, sometimes I do things publicly and, you know, people get sad. 
shouldn't have said that. Well, it's not a lie. I'm just telling the truth. But with him yesterday in, in the locker room, I just said, look, I love the fact that you're holding people in this room accountable. I think it's great. Now, what if somebody holds you accountable? How are you going to react? What are you going to say when they say you're holding the ball too long? Would you please just pass it to me? You're over dribbling. What are you going to say? And I looked at the team and I said, you know what? I think you'll be fine with it. But the, the players need to know that we're all in this together and we're all holding each other accountable. I mean, it was great. Halftime. Yo, dude, you're not playing with any energy. Where are you? We need you. He didn't say it in a mean way. And I, said, I stopped the team and I said, when someone says something to you, I need the rest of you to say facts. So all I need you to say in unison, facts. Because I don't want anybody sad or their people sad that someone said something that was the truth. A lot of times when a big guy gets the ball down on a rebound, they'll go straight up or the pump fake go up. It seems like Oscar just immediately looking to toss it out to the three. Is that we a have a rule. We, uh, we have a rule with a rebound. If you rebounded and your shoulders are facing, okay, you, you offensive, and you're, you're facing, you shoot it. If your back is to the rim, you kick it out. Now, what's happened is he got 19 guys blocking him out. And when he rebounds it, he ends up eight out of 10 times with his back to the basket. Now, last game, he had one. He rebounded it back to the basket, away from our bench, far court, and I think it was Ty Ty was wide open and he turned to try to do and he shot a fadeaway. We don't know. If you catch it and your shoulders are facing, shoot it. If your shoulders are to the back, back to the rim, then you're a passer. So it's a simple if you watch, if he's facing, he'll try to get it to the rim. If his back is to the basket, you'll say that's what he's being taught. Was he doing this kind of stuff when he got here last year? year in the middle of the year in practice, or did he need an adjustment period to get to the point where he is now? Well, the one thing I was really surprised at is, is how well he shot. But he, 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 he's just getting the confidence to let it go. And so I started putting in things to make him shoot jump shots. Like, I'm just saying, you're going to shoot him now. And now all of a sudden everybody says, wow, I can't believe he can shoot. Well, if you had been in our practice, you're like saying, why isn't he shooting more jump shots? So we just, uh, you know, he, he's, he's here, here's, here's what we got to figure out. And this is, again, we got a couple defenders that we need to play red defense. Can't stay in front of people. I had Derek Willis. Let's, don't be embarrassed. Be so happy that I care enough about you that I'm willing to do this with our defense. That's one. The second thing is, who's going to be the rebounder when two guys are going to block him out? Or I got to take him out of the game. Who's going to be the rebounder? Well, I, I just, it's rough in there, and I, I would rather. Well, you prove that you're that guy. You got to be on the court. You got to be on the court. So there are things like this we're going to have to figure out as we go. I don't, I, I don't know. I'm not going to say. I don't know. Um, they're not. Hopefully, they're getting closer. Will they play tomorrow? I don't know. They won't play if they don't practice. They have to practice today to be able to play in that game tomorrow. How about Jacob and Jonathan to be able to do the work you guys have done inside the lane? Uh, what does that speak to? The just the intention you guys are, you know, driving inside the lane and getting baskets down there. Well, what, one of the things it's doing is it's giving Damian a chance to go, come on now. So he played 15 minutes. And he got one rebound, one block shot. Come on. In 15 minutes. Now, if that's the case in 15, how much should he have played? That's, now, I know somebody may be sad, sad that he said that. That's the truth. That's merit-based. If you want to play more, force me to play you. Force me to play you. Perform. 
and again, perform on this team, fight. Come up with balls, block shots. Yeah, but it's easier if I just make a play and try to throw one or if I can do off. I'm just telling you, fight. Come up with balls, block shots. Be the energy guy. When everybody watches the game, they see your energy, and they say, he's got to be on. Force me to play you. Not about anything. That's what it is. Are we a better team when you're on the court, or aren't we? I, I don't know if you noticed, I took four guys out of the game and huddled them. I said, listen, guys, if this is what you are, I'm taking you all four out. You need to get on each other. If someone's breaking down defensively because they're not doing their job or they're not talking, you better say something because I'll take you all out. This is on all of you. So, you know, we're just – this is a learning – I got to hold them accountable, especially the best players, which I've always done. I can't have whining when you're telling the truth. You, you, hey, here it is. You know, you want me to say it nicer? I'll say it nicer. You know, you got to do this nice. I, 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 tell the truth. Come on, man. Now let's go. We got a good group. We did a we did a, a an exercise where I had him go around the room, and each guy took a guy to tell him how much they appreciate him and what they appreciate about him. We have a great. I loved hearing it because we got a group of young people that are terrific, and it's why CJ said. When they knew we were, he was going to have to have the operation, he hugged me and told me he was sorry. I'm like, you don't tell me you're sorry. What are you talking about? He said, Coach, I love this group, and I really wanted to play with them and help them. We got that kind of group. Now, do we have fighters? Do we have guys that will battle or not? And it's, as I say this, all of our fans, the 4 million of them that live in the state and the 100 million that live everywhere else or more, are watching to say who fights and who doesn't, who guards and who doesn't, who rebounds and who doesn't. And it's out there. This team, we got a chance. But if we don't get that, and this game, it's not the end-all game. Got to win it. If we lose it, we're done. No, this is an NCAA tournament team. Terrific for us to play. It's what we need. And we're going to learn. These early games, that's what you do. But let me say this again. You need tune-up games. You need tune-up games. You need games where you can work through the kinks and you, you can still build confidence and you can have guys understand what they can and can't do. But these are the games that you really, all right, what did we learn? Where do we have to go? I mean, let me say this. There was, first of all, it was post-defense that we didn't spend enough time on, and it showed. And then it was three-point shot defense, where we've always been pretty good, didn't spend any time. Then it was, okay, we, if you want to press, you better put some time in. Can't just say, okay, now we're going to press. They don't know. If you think you know, they know. As a coach, you're usually wrong. They don't know. And you can't, okay, I said this every year. Anybody that listens to me, most of you don't. You can't be good at everything. All right, what is this team going to be good at? I like that we're fast. I like that we shoot it. You know, I like that we can score. We got to get to the line more. Okay, why aren't we getting to the line more? Um, you know, fadeaways or, you know, I know I got guys shooting floaters, and they should. It's their best way of getting baskets, and it also opens up the backboard for, say it? So one guy's paying attention. Other guys put their heads down and act like they're writing. Okay, it opens the backboard for him. One of the reasons we're doing it. You said before, if a guy isn't making shots or not getting his shots, he has to help you in other ways. How does that apply to Kellen? What are you looking for from him? Like the other night, he only got like three shots. You know, and I said after the game, I thought somebody said, well, you had three guys sub for him. How many minutes did he play? 25 minutes. Played a lot of minutes. So then it was, well, what, what did they do? We had 17, 18, 19, whatever he had the game before, so what did the other team do? They focused like he can't be the guy. All right, so now 
He's got to figure out other ways. Secondly, maybe I got to do something to free him up, to give him some space. And again, I'm, I'm not watching the stat sheet. I'm just watching my team. But the reality of it is he's got to be one of those guys for us. And it's not just shooting the ball. He's a hell of a player. He can make basketball plays. Um, he'll find people, but he scores baskets. He scored 2,000 points in college in four years. Now he's here. Like I say to him, score the ball. That's what you know. I don't think so. But, you know, when he gets here, we'll, you know, he, he may not be in any kind of shape to, you know, to really do it. But um, we'll see. John, there's been an uh, obvious noticeable number of empty seats at the home games. What, and I've watched, I've looked at some of the postings on the internet. They're, they're talking about the caliber of opponents. If they're still up, some people upset about kneeling for the anthem. What do you, how does that play on your mind? I think it, it, I think it mostly is COVID. That's what I think it is. I think, you know, one of the things, a friend of mine, they, they only have two entrances into the building. You got an older crowd. You have to walk 25 minutes to get in the building. I think you're going to think, think next time I may not come. But I think most of it is COVID-driven. And, um, but, you know, sold a bunch of new season tickets, got a bunch of new... Uh, fundraising is, you know, and I think the positive in this is, one, we need our fans, but two, we're still going to be one of the teams that lead the country in attendance. Attendance, th this COVID knocked everyone for a loop around the country. So you could have two guys say it's this and two guys say it that. doesn't mean that's what a majority of people think. And I, I believe it's, uh, um, if there are season tickets, there may be some season tickets available. I'll say this, buy them because then you may not be able to get them for the next 15, 20 years. And then, you know, the people that have purchased tickets have given a lot of money. So the fundraising and all the other stuff, I, I just see it as a COVID thing that we're going to have to work through. And, um, but we still, we got the best fan base. We got, and then if there are 500 people that say, I don't want to go, I'm too old, I'm this, I'm that, or whatever reason, it'll be 500 people buy the tickets. I mean, it's, you know, and there are other things, you know, that you may look at, but I, I, I think we'll be fine. Our fans, it's just great to have them back. And I'd say, like, this, this game, we need our fans at the game. It's going to be a really hard game, hard game. It's probably – one or two guys uh, are those kind of guys that can you know, get, create fouls and do things. Um, but it's just as we play, we have to look at it. You know, I, what I'm teaching, which is instead of going all the way to the rim, you're shooting floaters, you'll get that shot off every time. <laughs> you probably won't get fouled, but you'll get it off. And if you can make it, we're going to end up shooting a high percentage. Um, and if we're not shooting a whole lot of fouls, then we got to make sure we're not fouling. Don't foul him. Game will end with 12 free throws on each side. That's good. Coach, this team has such a deep roster, but they only scored 10 points off the bench Tuesday night. Do you think that's an area of concern going into tomorrow night's game? Well, their big guys are all like fours, even their sub, and they all pick and pop, shoot threes. I mean, their they're, they're fours and fives shoot threes, um, deep threes. That's who they are. And one of the issues becomes um, long rebounds. The games that I've watched, um, they, they've killed the other team where they missed a shot and the ball bounced and they get it and score that. So you're going to have to get long rebounds. And they're going to, you know, if you're shooting threes, they're bouncing out there. 